Since we first met him in 2012, much and more has been said about the internet hacker come entrepreneur. Too much. I think it's past time that we took a moment to revise the Kim.com saga. Kim.com, a convicted hacker and white collar criminal, sets up Cyberlocker site Mega Upload from Hong Kong. In 2008, he visits New Zealand and he must have liked it, since he later successfully applies for a visitor visa, then residency, with officials deciding his investment power outweighs his criminal past. He makes friends with the then Auckland Mayor John Banks and pays for a celebratory fireworks display on New Year's Eve 2010. But trouble was afoot. The US files an indictment against Alcom and his associates, accusing him of racketeering and money laundering. Then... 6.47am, the 20th of January, and the raid is underway. The dot-com mansion is raided in a heavy-handed operation involving the CIA, 70 police officers, two helicopters, automatic weapons and attack dogs. Kim is arrested and stripped of all his assets worth over $20,000. After some concerns about Dotcom being a flight risk, he's granted bail, and his wife Mona gives birth to twins. Oh. Kim has his first New Zealand interview with TV3's John Campbell. I'm no piracy king. I offered online storage and bandwidth to users, and that's it. Apparently upset, John Banks distanced himself from the drama. Dotcom reveals he gave $50,000 to Banks' failed re-election campaign, but was asked to split that into two $25,000 checks in order to keep it anonymous. Banks goes into a political tailspin. You'd remember that surely if you helicoptered into the Coatesville mansion, you would surely remember that. I can't recall whether I did or not. I wouldn't ring somewhere to uh, thank them for an anonymous donation. I wouldn't ring an anonymous donat donator uh, to thank them for an anonymous donation. I wouldn't ring an anonymous donator. Yeah, you get the point. Banks is later found guilty of filing a false electoral return. John Banks is standing down at the next election. And 3 News gets in trouble for showing footage of Banks eating his own earwax. <coughs> Gross. Politician. Tim writes a song. Again. The date for Dotcom's extradition hearing is set, then delayed four times. The district court rules Dotcom's legal team should have access to information gathered by the FBI in the case against him. That decision gets overturned and appealed until the Supreme Court rules in favour of the US and Dotcom's team is only allowed to see a summary of the evidence. Kim invites some people on Twitter to swim at his house. The High Court rules the raid on the Dotcom mansion was illegal, which is later overturned, and cloned copies of digital material were sent overseas illegally. John Key admits to the GCSB illegally spying on Dotcom, and a media storm ensues. Of course I apologise to Mr Dotcom, I apologise to New Zealanders. The chief legal advisor and top spy boss gets the boot. Hi there. Hello. Q? No. Is it Q? No. Q Wolfenson? Dotcom tweets his intention to provide a second undersea internet cable. Alleged internet pirate Kim.com will make his theatre debut in Auckland tomorrow night as Santa Claus. <laughs> On the anniversary of the raid, Dotcom launches mega.co.nz, a similar cyber locker site with full encryption to insulate Dotcom from further legal issues. Woo! Afterwards, Dotcom promises, I'll be more low-key from now on. Spoiler, he's not. May 31st, Dotcom gets his stuff back. Woo! We're at the halfway point. Doing great so far. We? What's all this we stuff? I'm doing all the hard work. Great time's over. Here we go. The bodged handling of Dotcom's case leads to some controversial new GCSB legislation rushed through Parliament under urgency. Well, how do you think that Kiwis feel about the bill? I think they're much more interested in the stamper quota. Kim squares up to Key at a public submissions hearing. Kim believes Key gave him residency in order to sell him off to the US as part of a deal to shoot the Hobbit films here. But Key repeatedly denies ever knowing about Dotcom until the day before the raid. Well, he knew about me before the raid. You know, I know. I know you don't know. I know you don't know, actually, but that's fine. A 3 News read research poll sides with Dotcom. Dotcom resigns as mega director and hints at political ambitions. He tweets that he may bankroll Team New Zealand for their next America's Cup bid. Behind me, Kim.com in his natural element. And he faces off against 100 Call of Duty players at Victor Arena and beats 99 of them. Later, he performs at Rhythm and Vines. I'm gonna 
Vice publishes a documentary about Dotcom, which is closely followed by a 60 minutes feature. Round two, fight! Mega Upload knowingly created and facilitated the distribution of stolen property. Am I the one who is at fault if users upload that kind of stuff? Do I have to go to jail for that? Because I didn't do it. I'm the easiest person to sell as a villain. People aren't, aren't, aren't investigated because of the way they look or the type of car they drive. Dotcom announces the name and logo for the internet party. Since he's not a citizen, he has a leadership role but can't stand for election himself. He releases the Good Time album. Hey, I just wanna live my life, my life. The day before the launch... 3News revealed Dotcom owns a rare personally signed copy of Hitler's Mein Kampf. And also of wearing this Nazi helmet. Some people he owes money to complain publicly. And Dotcom learns how New Zealand's media treats its politicians. What is it with the hostility? On Twitter, Dotcom announces he and Mona are separated. Kim offers to disband the internet party if it looks like they're not going to make the necessary 5% vote threshold, but instead makes a temporary alliance with Honi Harawera's Mana Party. Together they'll contest the election as the Internet Mana Party. Under MMP's coattail rule, Internet Mana needs to only get 1.2% to bring in a second MP. They announce former Greens member Lila Harre as their leader, and Kim donates a further $3 million to the cause. So Kim.com can't buy a house in New Zealand, uh, but he's bought a political party. He knows if the courts decide, yep, he's got to go back to the United States, the last person who can stop that is the Minister of Justice. It's 3250000 You don't spend that kind of money and not want something in return. What does he want? Uh, nothing that he said to me. Everyone is thinking that this is about my extradition. This internet party is my gratitude and my gift to those people of New Zealand. Dotcom offers a $5 million reward for any American whistleblowers that can assist him in his case against the US. A survey finds Dotcom and Harawera the least trusted public figures in New Zealand. <laughs> Dotcom announces he will drop a political bomb five days before the election. I'm doing a town hall event in Auckland. I'm going to reveal my evidence that John Key lied. And now we wait. On the precipice of an election, and with political campaigns in full swing, no one knows how it's going to end. But one thing is certain, Kim.com knows how to get in and stay in the spotlight like few have before. And so I say, bring on the next two and a half years. Cam Neely, 3 News.